Project 2025 has sparked significant controversy and alarm as the United States heads towards the presidential election on November 5th, 2024. This ambitious initiative, driven by a coalition of conservative think tanks and policy groups, outlines a comprehensive vision for transforming the federal government. According to the document, Project 2025 aims to restore American greatness by significantly restructuring federal agencies, curtailing regulatory powers, and implementing a series of sweeping policy changes aligned with conservative principles. One of the more contentious aspects of the document states, we seek to dismantle the administrative state and return power to elected officials and the American people. Critics argue that Project 2025's proposals could lead to unprecedented changes in the balance of power within the federal government, potentially undermining established norms and protections. The document calls for a reduction in the size of government, including substantial cuts to social programs, environmental regulations, and public health initiatives. Furthermore, it advocates for a radical overhaul of the judiciary, aiming to appoint judges who adhere strictly to constitutional originalism. The rhetoric of restoring American greatness and dismantling the administrative state has raised concerns about the erosion of democratic institutions and the potential for increased executive power. As Election Day approaches, the anxiety surrounding Project 2025 continues to grow. Supporters believe it represents a necessary course correction for the nation, while detractors fear it could lead to authoritarianism. Project 2025 is an ambitious plan. It outlines a different future for our world. The goal is to reshape society as we know it. The proposers envision a world with less conflict and more unity. Project 2025 is shrouded in secrecy. However, leaked documents have revealed some of its key proposals. One proposal in particular has sparked intense debate. This is the concept of a mandatory communal day of rest. It aims to establish a day when all global activity ceases. This includes work, commerce, and even internet usage. The objective is to create a period of global reflection and peace. A day of rest for all exploring the proposal. The proposed day of rest is designed to be all encompassing. On this day, all businesses would be required to shut down. All forms of transportation except for emergencies would be halted. The internet, a cornerstone of modern society, would be temporarily deactivated. This digital blackout is meant to encourage people to disconnect from the virtual world. The goal is to reconnect with themselves and their communities. Supporters believe this will foster a sense of global unity. They argue that a shared day of rest will bring people closer together. The break from routine is also expected to provide mental and physical rejuvenation. This could lead to increased productivity and creativity when people return to their regular schedules. Advocates of Project 2025, and specifically the Day of Rest, highlight its potential benefits. They argue that a break from the relentless pace of modern life is essential. They believe this will lead to reduced stress levels and improved mental health. Moreover, they envision a decrease in crime rates during the Day of Rest. With businesses closed and people at home, opportunities for criminal activity would be minimized. The enforced break from technology is another aspect touted by supporters. They believe it will allow individuals to disconnect from the digital world. This disconnect, they argue, will foster genuine human interaction and strengthen relationships. Despite the perceived benefits, Project 2025 has drawn sharp criticism. Opponents view the mandatory day of rest as a violation of individual liberty. They argue that it infringes upon the right to work and conduct business. The proposed internet shutdown has also raised concerns about freedom of speech and access to information. Critics also question the economic ramifications of a global standstill. They argue that the sudden halt in economic activity could lead to significant financial losses. This in turn could trigger a global recession with far-reaching consequences. The alarm has been amplified by the apocalyptic language found within the document, drawing parallels to biblical prophecy. Revelation 14, 9 through 11 mentions a warning against those who worship the beast and its image. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, 
If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. This is a whole topic in itself, but we will quickly mention that having a global day of rest has everything to do with this beast and its image. The proposal of having a global day of rest is certainly not a new concept. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Historically, numerous administrations and groups in the United States have put forward and enforced Sunday laws, often referred to as blue laws, which mandate Sunday as a universal day of rest and worship. One notable instance occurred in the mid-19th century when Seventh-day Baptists, who observed the Sabbath on Saturday, legally contested Pennsylvania's Sunday law. Thaddeus Stevens, a distinguished lawyer and future radical Republican congressman, argued that the law impinged on religious freedom. Nevertheless, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court upheld the statute, emphasizing its importance in maintaining the Christian Sabbath as a day of rest. In the latter part of the 19th century, Senator Henry Blair introduced the Sunday Rest Bill in 1888, aiming to enforce Sunday as a national day of rest. This proposal gained backing from various religious and civic groups, but faced significant opposition from those who viewed it as a violation of the separation of church and state. Ultimately, the bill did not pass, but it highlighted the ongoing debate regarding the role of religion in public policy. In the 20th century, the influence of Sunday laws persisted, although their enforcement varied. During the 1950s and 1960s, there was a renewed effort to enforce these laws in response to changing social norms and increasing commercial activities on Sundays. However, legal challenges centered on religious freedom and economic liberty gradually led to the decline of such laws. These debates underscore the complex interplay between religious observances and legislative actions in the history of the United States. Now, the implications of Project 2025 Sabbath rest proposal to biblical prophecies, particularly those in the Book of Revelation, adds an intriguing layer of analysis. For instance, Revelation 13.17 mentions a time when commerce is restricted without a specific mark, leading some to realize that such modern laws will eventually lead to stricter religious regulations. This interpretation suggests that contemporary political strategies will echo ancient prophetic visions, heightening both curiosity and concern. Project 2025, with its ambitious goals and controversial proposals, presents a complex dilemma. Its vision of a world united through shared rest is undeniably appealing. However, the potential costs, both in terms of individual liberty and economic stability, cannot be ignored. With all the ongoing chatter about this potential political proposal, what no one is telling you about Project 2025 is, no matter who is in power, Bible prophecy must be fulfilled. Here's a genuine question for you. Given your knowledge of Bible prophecy and the possible implications of Project 2025, if you had the opportunity to speed up or slow down the implementation of Project 2025, would you support or oppose it? Let us know why in the comments.